Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You'll always find the best of what you love or something new to discover. That sure is true. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre. Bestsellers, new releases, celebrity memoirs like the Britney Spears book that just came out, mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, and so much more. I personally just listened to Heather Gay's Bad Mormon, um, kind of for Real Housewives of Salt Lake City research, but also just for fun to listen to it because it was a good book. And it's great. I mean, it's her actually reading it. And it is so nice to run around and do my errands and be able to listen to a book. Because let's face it, I will crash my car if I try to read it physically. It's a great use of Audible. So try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappins or text crappins to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappins or text crappins to 500-500. This episode is brought to you by Philo. Remember when cable was affordable? Of course you don't, because it's been so long since it was. Philo has shows, movies, and live TV for just $25 a month. You can even try it for free with their seven-day free trial. No contracts, no commitments, no hassles. Just a better way to watch TV. Never miss a minute of shows like 90 Day Fiancé, Golden Girls, or Law & Order. If you can't get enough TV, then there's no better way to watch. Philo has more than 70 channels like BET, AMC, and Lifetime. Try it yourself with their seven-day free trial. Sign up today at philo.tv, that's P-H-I-L-O dot TV, and use promo code P-O-P-P-O-D-S to get 50% off your first month. And here's your prescription. I know just the pharmacy to get this filled. Who are you? A pharmacy benefit manager. A middleman your insurer uses to decide which medicines you can get, what you pay, and sometimes even which pharmacy you should go to. Why can't I go to a pharmacy in my neighborhood? Because I make more money when you go to a pharmacy I own. <laughs> no one should stand between you and your medicine. Visit phrma.org slash middleman to learn more. Paid for by Pharma. <laughs> All right, well, we're back with Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, part two of our recap of uh, this Bermuda trip. Uh, basically, Monica just found out that uh, she will not be seeing her family and she just was devastated and everyone reassured her and now they have headed back to they're headed back to the villa yes uh so now they are going to this like beach with a little chair set up which i mean i don't know if they ever park cars on this beach but it is one of their parking lot setups you know how they always do like folding yes. chairs in a parking lot <laughs> it is that setup but on a beautiful <laughs> beach this time yeah, you know what, you're right. I, I said they went back to the villa, or I implied it. You're right, they went to this beach. Yes, they're, they are most at ease when they're on folding chairs in an in, in outdoor area. <laughs> I love it. I mean, they're like, girls are don't folding have a chair in a Cheeto, you know? They love it. Yeah, you know, I mean, they didn't have, like, a, a mountain of dirty snow, but it was close. I mean, well, meaning that, like, it wasn't close, but, like, it was almost just as good. It was a beautiful beach instead. So um, they're sitting down, and they're going to eat some Bermuda fish sandwiches. And then they're popping champagne and everything. And Lisa's like, okay, guys, hey, uh, we should play a game. And like, you know, I don't really even like games, but like, I think this would be like funny for me because uh, I want to propose a game and then like not play by the rules of it. Okay, so we should play marry, fuck, kill with husbands or soft drinks. Okay, you guys want to do it? You guys want to do it? So Andy's like, um, I've never played that game even i've never i mean i've married my husband but i haven't killed him and i also haven't fucked him in a very long time i'm greek and they're like no that's not how you play it andre if you just say who you'd want to marry fuck or kill um i don't understand this game i've never heard of it before okay come on come on angie let's, let's roll with it angie okay <laughs> so monica's like okay um I'm gonna marry Justin, I'm gonna fuck Seth, and I'm gonna kill Sean, and I would fuck Sean and Seth. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I, I skipped Meredith. Sorry, Meredith's so going, I'll start, okay? All three of the guys, all three marry fucking kill. 
my husband. <laughs> Hanging by a thread available in wherever you hear podcasts. <laughs> so Angie's like, wait a minute. Do we ask why or do we just go on with the game? And Monica's like, no, it's just for fun. Just go with it, Angie. So Whitney's like, I would marry John. I would fuck Sean. And I would call Seth. Huh. And <laughs> but she doesn't really explain why. I want people to explain the murder. I don't. And whenever people say "fuck, marry, kill," I don't feel like you have to explain fucking because, like, I don't know. We all fuck random people. Well, I don't know. We all fuck. I'm really going to this well a lot today, but we all um, we've all stuck our really... dick in a wall before we get run over by a <laughs> bus. Well, we really don't have to explain like who we're fucking, right? And then like marrying, I guess that's self-explanatory. Like. I would marry them because they would be a good partner. But murder, I feel like you should have to explain the murder part. Like, I would murder, you know, Seth because he's kind of creepy and because he, like, tries to motorboat cakes made out of my boobs or, like, in the shape of my boobs. Did that yeah. happen? That happened, right? That did happen, yeah. He, like, licked uh, Whitney's cake nipple. So yeah. then Lisa's like, okay, well, I would uh, marry Justin or Sean uh, because I, th I think they're both like funny and cool and stable. And then it cuts to Meredith. Meredith goes, Hats, implying that Seth is none, none of those things. And she goes, um, and I have to fuck John Barlow. Sorry, I can't fuck anyone else. Oh. And they're like, Lisa, that's not the game. Come on. Yeah, but I can't even think of anybody else because I love fucking John. Okay, enough. Enough with that. Okay. <laughs> She's like, I can't think of anyone. It has to be John Barlow. It has to be only John Barlow. Only John Barlow for the rest of my life. Okay, what about a celebrity? Idris Elba! Idris Elba! Idris Elba! Idris Elba! I choose Idris Elba. I choose him. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, so then, uh, that's, I mean, wow. When she said that, I was like, Lisa and just, Idris? I just can't, I can't really see that. Like, John, I can see because already they're fucking, but also there's something about when you use the same self tanner as somebody else, it's just comfortable. You know what I mean? <laughs> you both know what you're going to be smearing all over the furniture. Like, you're not going to feel self conscious mm. about it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was, I was surprised. I wonder Lisa if he feels the same. Elba. Idris. Lisa El Barlow. Barlow. Um, uh, I, if Idris El Elba watched Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, I would have so much respect for him. Mm -hmm. I would love that. I wonder if he does, just to like chill, you know? Okay, so then um, Heather's like, uh, oh, wow, wow, Lisa, don't let John Barlow's body get cold before you jump on Idris. <laughs> so now it's Angie's turn, and she's like, um, I would marry Justin, kill your ex, Monica, and then I would have sex with my own husband. And Heather's like, I just pick Seth for everything, and then I take all of his money. I marry Baklava, fuck Spanakopita, and kill Musaka. So uh, I'm Greek. So then um, Lisa's like, hey, 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 Angie, you want to go for a walk real quickly? Yeah. It's not strange at all. Yeah, let's go for a walk. So Lisa pulls Angie for a walk. We all know where this is going. And Lisa's like, yeah, wow, this sound is amazing. As amazing as I imagine caressing Idris Elba's skin would be. Ah, okay, I have something to tell you. I love Idris Elba. I mean, something else beside that. It's been literally so hard for me to keep my mouth shut, but I wanted to tell you alone. I masturbated to a picture of Idris Elba last night. Oh, I can't stop myself. Oh my God, what's happened? <laughs> so basically, Monica talked to Meredith and Meredith basically said that she thinks you're like literally in the Greek mafia. <laughs> just <laughs> drops it. <laughs> and Angie doesn't really react at first. She's just kind of like, uh, what? She goes, I? And she goes, yeah, yo, yo, yo. And I was like, you have to be fucking kidding me. And Angie goes, this is ridiculous. Like, I would own the mafia. That's cool, right? Wouldn't that be cool if I was in the Greek mafia? And uh, she's like, yeah, I mean, that's ridiculous, right? I mean, wait, wait, though, there's more to it. So apparently, right before the trip, Monica got all these DMs, and there were all these documents about Sean and tax information saying you're part of the mafia. And I'm like, this is Meredith mailing you. 
This is what she did last year about the SEC documents with May. That's what. That's exactly what she did. Yeah, but Monica's also the one who told everybody that Sean was like fucking a bunch of randos in town. Like, how do you even yeah. know on this cast who to believe? Like, how do you even know when to be mad? Also, by the way, if Angie K were in the Greek mafia, I think she'd have more than two pairs of sunglasses that she'd be trotting out. Okay. So Angie is like, uh, I didn't like, know there was a Greek she... mafia. Like, I'm upset that I don't know. <laughs> How do I not know that there's a Greek mafia? I mean, I'm not Greek. I'm Lebanese. But still, we share so much of the same foods. I, fi I figure someone would be like, oh, really? You think you guys Delicious get mafia. pita bread? You don't get pita bread. <laughs> They'd be like, get off my pita. I'm pay for it. Angie's just going in with a bat, baseball bat, you know. Yeah. You don't get to claim Olympia Dukakis. <laughs> <laughs> so Angie's like, this is what she does. She is constantly threatening or trying to threaten my family, my reputation, going and digging up shit on me. And if she wants to keep coming after me, she is making a lifetime commitment. I was like, well, that does not sound like something that came from the mafia whatsoever. <laughs> Not at all. Oh, yeah. Does she want to come with me? Then if she is going to come for me, she better plan on doing it without kneecaps. Like, uh. <laughs> uh I'm <laughs> going to make her an offer she can't refuse. Unlimited phyllo dough. Uh, uh, uh. Is she coming for me again? You, you try to get out and they pull you back in. Like, oh, God. <laughs> Angie, 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 no. <laughs> and then there's like a 20 minute, like uninterrupted, <laughs> uninterrupted shot of her walking around a nightclub. Um, so she's like, uh, Meredith is dismissing everything I've worked for and I've fucking had it. I'm sick of her coming for my business. I'm sick of her coming for my family. It's like enough is enough. If she wants to see gangster, I'm going to show her gangster. Tonight, she sleeps with the fish's opa. <laughs> she better hope she is not made of bread. And so Angie's like, <laughs> that girl. Like now she's getting really worked up and she starts like waving her finger around and yelling on the beach. She goes, that girl, that, that is a phony baloney. What a fraud. <laughs> I was like, yes. Like, but, but, I love when they just start to read on the Salt Lake City. They're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna rhyme something with phony. And it's going to be baloney. Take that, B! She is a phony baloney. Well, I mean, I have to say, I do think that there must be something to these rumors because the amount of times they called each other phony baloney and goodfellas, you know. When Ray Liotta was running away from the helicopter at the end of that movie and the FBI was saying, like, we, we, we have you surrounded, you phony baloney. Put your hands up. Uh, that's, that's also a trick phrase because... Baloney is phony. So, <laughs> I don't know. No one knows what baloney is. So, is What's fake baloney actually like organic meat? <laughs> it's the oxymoron of meats. It's an oxymoronic cottony. Okay, so we go back to the house, and Heather is like calling Ashley, and she says, Oh my God, there's been so much drama, Ashley. I got into it with Monica, and she wanted to talk about your sex life. And I was like, Oh, no, you don't, because that's a non starter. Do not talk about my daughter's sex life. I'm like, oh, okay. I don't. I don't know that you really got into it. You just told her to shut up. But I like yeah. that she's going, like, Ashley's going to be like, oh, my God, Mom, thank you so much for not talking about my sex life. Thank you. <laughs> she's like, Mom, can I get a hundred more dollars in my account, please? Uh, I want to go out tonight. They, so then, Mom, uh, could you send me more money? They've raised the price of condoms. So. <laughs> thank you, <Ashley. laughs> So Whitney is in her room reading Bad Mormon, and she's like, fun fact that might shock people is that I actually read books. I love true crime and books about spirituality and books about business. And my favorites are thrillers. And it seems like Heather's life is a combination of that. It's like, Whitney, you are reading the book perpendicularly. Okay. You're holding it like a calendar. Uh, you are reading the back of a baloney uh, packet. <laughs> <laughs> You're just looking at your fitted sheet. It's not a book. So Angie goes to Monica's room and um, she's like, oh my God, let's go out onto the balcony, which I might hold you over. 
if I feel the need to and don't get the answers I want. Okay, now, here's the thing. I hate to bring this up on your birthday, but Lisa shared what you, what you said this morning about what you, what Meredith said about the Greek person here. Me, that is me. And Monica's like, yeah. Okay, just, yeah, okay. She goes, oh my God, well, I've already gotten in trouble for repeating rumors that I've heard, so that better not be what's happening again. Mm. Are you upset that I told Lisa? No, I I needed to hear it from the horse's mouth before I chopped it off and put it into a bed. Ha ha ha, there, Mm -hmm. that reference works here. So she goes, Mm -hmm. Monica's like, listen, I did not tell Lisa, okay, I did not tell Lisa this part, um, girl, but like something that like dawned on me after like I spoke to Lisa and like my, okay, my wheels started turning, okay? (laughs) Um, I would never have known about this DM and have it like in my inbox, except for Meredith called me and was like, have you gotten any DMs, girl? (laughs) Girl. And I was like, no. And then she was like, I got one, so you must have gotten one. And then I was like, wait a minute, why would I have gotten anything? So I go and check. And then Angie goes, oh, you know what I love? I love that little pita crumb she left for you. She's trying to get you to do her dirty work, Monica. That is what she is doing. That girl is baloney and not a real kind. It is a phony kind. Phony baloney. Like all these- Look at all these fish eating those pita crumbs. So that goes a um, fake falafel. <laughs> She's going to sit back with her little cocktail and watch it all go down. And in the end, you look like the big mouth. Sorry to curse. And you look like the troublemaker. Sorry again. Uh, well, I do have a big mouth. Just, and that is fine. You know, you need to use that mouth for good. Right, girl? And Monica's like, well, here's the thing. I mean, she knows. So, I mean, listen, she knows I'm going to say it and come out with it. But like, yeah, you know. And and I just wanted you to know about it. And, and she's like, well, I am grateful. I am grateful to you because now I have the opportunity to address it. Which... Why didn't you just go to Angie in the first place? I think Monica is kind of getting caught in the same thing where Meredith went to yeah. Monica because she wanted Monica to carry the information and Monica didn't carry the information. Instead, she passed it off, like you were saying. Right. And now the same thing is happening again where everybody's just passing it off, but it's still going to end up all being Monica's fault somehow. Yep. So now it's later. Monica's it face timing with Brie. Yeah. She brought it Monica's okay. FaceTiming with Brie and um, Monica's like, yeah, you know what? Like Brie came out of the womb, just like this old soul. <laughs> I love like a a newborn baby with still a placenta on it. Like, <laughs> like is there a draft in here? Wah. Um, So she basically says that <laughs> the baby's like crying until you start playing murder. She wrote for it. <laughs> the baby's like, I just heard about this great recipe. You want to talk about it? So um, uh, she's basically saying, you know, she's so chill and she understands our family dynamic and she sees all sides of it. And she's the only person I want to talk to, which I don't know. I always feel like it's really cringy when parents unload their personal shit onto their children. I feel like children shouldn't have to, like, be burdened with that. I feel like children should just be able to enjoy, you know, you know, being a teenager. But uh, whatever. Every family's different. So uh, she just well, tells Brie Mon- is definitely the adult in this family, right? I mean, we can see that. Yes. Monica is like not the most emotionally stable. And Brie's like, oh, my God. She's like, what are you doing right now? She's like, I'm in the carpool line picking up the kids. Like, oh, OK. So let me talk about what a bitch my mom is, you know. Um, yeah. So she does. She does tell her that. She tells her. Um, she says, I, I think, think Vovo. Vovo. Yeah, I think Vovo got involved with the family and they completely ghosted me and they stopped responding to my texts or getting my calls. So then what was the text that you got in the car that set you off? I mean, I'm guessing it's just production, you know, saying like we officially can't film here. But the way that she set up in the beginning was she got a text saying you can't come here because of your mom or something. So I'm just pointing out that we still can't really follow what's happening here. But there is a huge exactly. plant behind her, so I would like to think that Linda feels like she has at least somebody to talk to in this scene. <laughs> and Bree's like, Mom, just know there's nothing you did, and anything they heard came from Vovo, and it shouldn't reflect on who you are, and I'm sorry because it's terrible. And uh, Monica's just saying how like her daughters are so lucky to have a tribe of sisters, yada, yada, yada. So then um, everyone's dressing up for dinner, and... Uh, 
most of them are dressing up like pirates, but you know, Lisa and Meredith are the holdouts. Meredith is doing her own interpretation, which as some people online have said, looks more like fortune teller than pirate. And Lisa's She's just got like a turban thing going on, which is very funny. It's very Gloria Swanson in, it's like a pirate sunset boulevard, which I like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she has a turban. i close up, Mr. <laughs> I didn't get smalls. The there's the pictures that yeah, big or something. So um, she's wearing a pirate shirt, a turban. Is that what she said? She yeah. So the the turban. She's wearing a turban. She's got a pirate shirt on, but she's also wearing a leather skirt. So it's it's a look. <laughs> but it's better than Lisa. Lisa's just. Is this where she's? Bearings. What is she wearing? <laughs> We didn't even talk about her crazy outfit before, her Versace jumpsuit to go. Her purple Versace jumpsuit. I know, it's crazy. So what is she? She's like, girl, I'm wearing hoops and a golden chamber. That's what I'm wearing. No, this is where she was wearing purple, I think. Yeah. Oh, is this? Like a jumpsuit. No, I think think she was. That's what I remember. That was the good jet sky. So Heather's like, oh my God, I think this one's like a hot pink thing so heather's like um Maybe. you look like a wedge but not the booty kind <laughs> meredith i don't know and meredith's like it's yeah, perfect shut up so then monica comes in full on pirate you know because this is heather heather's down for it because it's her thing but also new people are down for it because they come ready right. like angie and monica are like oh my god best party city pirate get ups <laughs> well monica's actually she's actually put like a little beard on <laughs> Which is yeah. funny. She's actually drawn a little beard. And it's like, girl, you're going to be in the trailer for the season with a little beard on. I love <laughs> Just it. Just know this. <laughs> Just know this. So then so, um, they get that back in that sprinter van again. And Whitney's telling him, guys, my costume came with something funny. A G-string. <laughs> I thought it was an eye patch. And I put it on to read this book. Like, uh, Whitney, that's a bar of soap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. It's really I, thrilling. I find that this book is a real, it's a, it's a real um, page turner. No, that's the actual eye patch that came with your costume. It's not a book. <laughs> it's all full circle. So then we go to the restaurant and they go down these dark stairs to kind of the beach. And it's kind of this cave thing in El Paso. Well, it's not in El Paso. It's in New Mexico in Carlsbad, New Mexico called Carlsbad Caverns. And you go through these caverns and they have all these, are they stalactites? Is that what they're called? Then there's the, stalactites and stalagmites. One's one hangs from the roof. One comes up from the floor. So cool. So they have that. And we used to go to it as kids and they would give us a tour and they would tell us that those are all made from bat poop that has just like calcified over the years or rockified wow. over the years. And I just think it's so funny <laughs> that they're all dressed in pirates to like literally go to bat shit. <laughs> the show is so fucking crazy. I just love it. It just it warms I my was, heart. All. I was not under the impression that those were from bat shit. I thought it was that like water dripping from the rocks, you know, it's just a buildup of minerals over time and that creates it. But I would not be surprised if there are some that are made from guano because guano is a whole thing. From bat guano, guano has intense. been sculpting caves in Brazil for thousands of years. I like that you know wow. the name for guano. Due to the yeah, corrosive guano. effect of their feces, bats have engineered larger caves in the iron rich earth of Carajas National Forest in Brazil, creating more stalagmites and stalactites. Wow. Um, well, you know what it is? I think it's all of the above because in Wikipedia, Wikipedia's page for stalagmite, um, it says it's they are due to the ac- accumulation of material deposited on the floor from ceiling drippings. They are composed of calcium carbonate, but may, may consist of lava, mud, peat, pitch, sand, sinter, and uh and amber rat which is the crystallized urine of pack rats <laughs> well wow well, god <laughs> amber rat couldn't they have come up with a better name than amber rat amber <laughs> well it's look at that crystallized rat urine what do you want to call it amber rat <laughs> i have a cousin named amber that's a real bee <laughs> Just, oh, leanne Locken here reporting for the department of geology i call that amber rat <laughs> Um, um, also, as long know. as we're talking about what? Well, no, I want to hear. I just want to say one thing. 
as long as I'm talking about corrections and whatever and finding out. By the way, I assumed that guano was included in that list of stuff. But um, the DMV I set up Potomac was Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia. It's DC, Maryland, and Virginia. I'm sorry, I said Delaware. I mean, Delaware is a lovely. Well, place, you're going to have to do that all again on that po- on that podcast. And it's I just want to get it out time. now. It's not your first not time first called time. to Delaware. It's not. But also, it just goes to show how much I listen because I should have been like, no, I remember last time the comments corrected you. And the thing is, like, I know it's DC, <laughs> but I don't know why I say De- I don't know why I go to Delaware. I don't, I don't know where my mind goes that way. I really don't know much of anything. I mean, just looking up this, are stalactites made from bat poop? That's that's what I wrote. And then I'm just. All these facts are like pouring over me. I'm never going to remember these again. Okay, here they are. What is mascara made out of? I mean, I'm guessing bat poop. Poop. Poop, right? And guess what? Does Doritos have guano? So at the end of the day, we cannot be 100% certain on what particles are in the air at these factories, but we do know they have a high health regulation by the FDA, and guano is not an active intentional ingredient in Doritos. So maybe there's accidental poop in Doritos. But nobody really knows. And guess what? That's from batremovalandprevention.com. So if you're going to sue somebody, sue them. You know what? I'm going to sue Google because I'm now looking at Google images of Amber Rat. And it's... uh... I'm going to look it up. Amber. It's actually not so bad. It's just like Rocky. It's just such a strange concept. (laughs) Um, Okay. (laughs) So let's... Give it such a nice name. Amber Rat. Amber Rat. Amber Rat. Uh... <laughs> Back to season one of Summer House. <laughs> or just Sheena being like, so my best friend Amrat's going to come on to the show and we're going like, to discuss why I'm the real victim in Scandal. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. Hey, Dave. Yeah, Randy. Since we founded Bombas, we've always said our socks, underwear, and T-shirts are super soft. Any new ideas? Maybe sublimely soft. Or disgustingly cozy. Wait, what? I got it. Bombas. Absurdly comfortable essentials for yourself and everyone on your list. And for those facing homelessness. Because one purchased equals one donated. Wow, did we just write an ad? Yes. Bombas. Big comfort for everyone. Go to bombas.com slash Wondery and use code Wondery for 20% off your first purchase. The mission. Find handmade gifts that won't blow your budget. The answer? Etsy. Whether you need something for the home chef in your life like serveware and cookware, or style pieces like rings, clutches, and seasonal jackets for that trend-setting special someone, Etsy has it for all budgets. New to Etsy? Use code HOLIDAY10 for 10% off your first purchase. Maximum discount value of $50. Expires December 31st, 2023. Terms at Etsy.com slash terms. Etsy has it. This episode is brought to you in part by Purina. The holidays are here. It's such a fun and festive time and also a great opportunity to reflect on all the things we're thankful for. And if you're like most people, your pet is somewhere at the top of your list. Purina is dedicated to creating richer lives for pets and the people who love them. From helping older pets think like their younger selves to making cat ownership a possibility for more people than ever. Purina is helping pets live longer, healthier, happier lives. Your pet gives you so much the whole year round. So this holiday season, treat your pet with Purina treats. Best in class nutrition, unsurpassed taste. From dogs to cats, Purina has you covered for all your treat needs. Your pet is Purina's passion. Head to amazon.com backslash Purina to learn more. Okay, okay, so let's go back. So now we're back at this restaurant, and um, Whitney can't walk it's in her Amber Stiletto Rats. Hills. And she's like, clearly stilettos weren't invented back then. And then we meet the head waiter, Cosman. And um, I don't know. Who cares? Like, they all sit down. They, they start talking about how great the menu is. But it's like a pre-selected menu. And um, Monica gives a speech. And she's like, okay. Hey, before, yeah. Go ahead. No, never mind. No, never mind. No, no, no. That's no, no, not worth it. Are you sure? Amber, Amber, keep going. Amber, alert. <laughs> keep going. Oh keep no. Going. <laughs> so Monica gives her speech, like thanking everybody for coming and buried booty and all of that. I have an idea. Since I felt sex shamed earlier on the bus, when was the time last time everyone had sex? You were not sex shamed, for Christ's sake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I also like, by the way, in the middle of this, Angie trying to order a drink. She's like, um, I want that drink. What's that stormy drink called? <laughs> dark and stormy dark and stormy angie i mean 
I'm I am concerned about what bubble Angie has been living in with Mary Fuck Kill and Dark and Stormy. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, but Monica was not. She was not sex sh- sex shamed. So, uh, so Monica tells us, I don't know if it's like the culture in Utah or what, but like talking about sex is like, how dare you? I'm like, you were, cause you were trying to get Heather to talk about her daughter's sex life on camera. Like that's a reasonable boundary for a mother to draw. They are like that on this show though. They're like, what? So they have to start talking about their sex lives. And Whitney's like, well, I had sex right before the airport and almost did last night, but my vibrator's dead. Ha 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 ha. And Lisa's like, oh, that's, is that a joke? I don't really understand. <laughs> Who killed the vibrator? <laughs> are we murdering vibrators now? <laughs> it's like, well, actually that was your book, Whitney. You've got to start figuring out what things are, okay? So she's like, I feel like I'm in like middle school or being pressured into saying like, what was the when was the last time you kissed a boy? It's like, I'm like, just like, don't ask me. I'm already wearing hoop earrings. <laughs> so uh, Lisa says the night before and Meredith says, well, I guess since Seth left a town, town a day and a half before me, I guess day and a half before me would mean that I had sex a day and a half ago so therein lies the truth thank you very much and now there's like i'm not answering that she's like, come on you know you don't like it when people refuse to play she's but i did answer i said i'm not gonna answer because you guys are all married that's an unfair question this is an unfair game you all have spouses what the hell are you talking about this is where monica is like i thought it was bad mormon now you can't even talk about sex outside of marriage oh my god girl I mean, if you're gonna if you're right. gonna rebel, I'm gonna have to show you how to do this right. I'm on my way. Okay, we're slutting it up. Heather's basically like, I'm not getting any ass, and I'm embarrassed about it, and you're making me feel bad because I'm the single girl. You guys all have someone you can get ass from, but I have no one to get ass from except for a guy who's like melting away in a hot tub somewhere. So oh, I was uh, taking it like- as. It's not unfair. It's not fair because you guys say that you're having sex and it looks normal. But if I have, if I say I'm having sex, I look like a slut because I'm not married. That's how I was taking. Oh, it. It, actually, it could be that I just took it like this is like I I'm gonna make myself look bad because I haven't had sex in forever, and then you guys are gonna hound me for it. But like I'm single, I don't have easy access to booty. That's how I took it. Uh, but actually, well, your interpretation really is also very viable. It's just weird because normally Heather's thing on this show is like, oh, my God, guys, I banged the guy from the Jen Shaw party. Do you remember? That was hot. I'm a bad Mormon. Mm. (laughs) So she's kind of got that thing going on all the time. So it's weird that she's getting super prudish about this now. I think she's trying to get into a fight with Monica about asking her asking about her daughter's sex life. But it's just not I don't know. It's just not the wrong time. It's not the right time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying to say. Okay, good. Making this a 10-hour so, recap, sorry. <laughs> Shall I bring up more facts about Amber Rat? So then uh, Heather is like, she's basically like, I don't want to talk about sex with Monica because I have seen the way she discusses sex and it makes me very uncomfortable. And she goes, let's all be respectful to the fact that I am single and I'm not in a marriage and it's not about sex shaming, but it's really, it's really shit that you would act like I'm ashamed to talk about it when I'm just trying to live my life and I'm the only single person here. And Monica's like, and she no, says, live my life. She says, I'm just trying to live my life and not be exposed. What does that mean? Oh, what does it mean? I don't, I don't know, know what, what any means. of this stuff means. And does it mean that she's having sex with somebody, but she doesn't want to talk about it on camera and they know that? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out like what the offense is here because I still don't get it. And I also like when she goes, yeah, and how I've seen about Monica talk about sex. I don't like how she talks about it. And then it cuts to Monica going, okay, I fucked my brother-in-law for a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not talking about sex. That's just saying like sex was uh, something that happened in this relationship. So then Heather is so Heather saying, well, Monica, you're married. And she's like, I'm literally going through a divorce. And I would be I would be divorced if the fucker would just sign the papers. And just because he doesn't sign the hasn't signed the papers doesn't mean that I'm married. And she goes, so you think you're as single as I am? You think you're just a single lady putting balloons together for breakfast parties three times a year? Is that what you're trying to say? 
It's so weird. And then Monica's like, yeah, if I wanted to fuck someone right now, I could, first of all, Heather's too mad. I'm like, what is Heather mad about? Too mad. And Monica, this is so Salt Lake City, though. They're like, okay, it's we're at a dinner. We better fight. So now they just start getting mad about nothing. So Monica's like, well, if I wanted to fuck someone right now, I could fuck someone right now. And it's, that's as single as it gets. So yeah, I'm single as you. Just because my man didn't sign the papers, you can't sit here and judge my relationship. Go ahead, judge her. What are you people fucking talking about? She never said oh, anything. This is not a fight. My this God. is not a good fight. And she's like, I'm not. I'm saying don't come at me saying you're a single as me when you're not. And Lisa goes, I respect how she feels about this. And Monica's like, no one says that we shouldn't. And Heather says, shut the fuck up. And then she goes, like Whitney said to me last night. So I just want to say this actually traces back to Whitney. This is Whitney's fault that I just said that. Just want to put that out there. <laughs> That's the implication. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Which is a Whitney Rose quote, everyone. A Whitney Rose and her foul oh. mouth. In the middle of a cave made out of bat shit. So Whitney's like, um, you know what, guys? We should not play games anymore. <laughs> you know what? I, the smartest thing that Whitney's ever said. <laughs> no more games, please. Okay, so, so it's really awkward now. So Whitney's like, um, the food's good at least. So Angie's like, okay, well, I actually wanted to take the heat which is another mob movie really off of you two so <laughs> meredith and meredith is like sipping her tea and smiling in her turban she's like <laughs> she's like oh I, she goes well you have yet again come for me and meredith goes um, I don't know what you're referring to. Uh, even though I look like I'm a fortune teller, I actually cannot read your mind on this one. Be quiet. I'm about to tell you. I'm just going to whip my whistle because it's kind of a lot of information. So let me have a swig of wine because why not? So Angie has her wine. Right. And, and it's like, uh, okay, all right, you tell me, you go right ahead, Angie. I think they're, and Whitney's just smiling at Angie, like, oh my God. They're all like, oh God, Angie. Angie's still struggling with her first full time season. You know, they're like, okay, let's support <laughs> Angie, everybody. Angie's going to be mad now. So, um, Angie. Let me have another swig of this, what do you call it? The tonic thing with the gin in it? Uh, gin and tonic. Yes, that. Let me uh -uh. have some more of this. So she goes, okay, you are accusing me of doing fraudulent things that I am in the Greek mafia. Tss, opa, tss. And Heather's like, wait, what? Angie in the Greek mafia? I grew up with Angie, and trust me, she's no Tony Soprano. <laughs> Where are you hearing this from? Are you getting DMs from some stranger? And Angie goes, Meredith, you have what employee? I have hundreds of people. I have a network of people, one could say, from the garbage people to the people who run the laundromat. I have hundreds and hundreds of people. And what you are doing is risking the livelihoods of my employees by spreading rumors that I'm in the fucking mafia. I never said that. Wait, can a Greek person not be successful without being accused of this? <laughs> it's like, have, is that a thing? I've <laughs> never this, heard of that. Like a Greek a person thing? like automatically being accused of being in the mafia. <laughs> I don't know. It seems like a stretch. It's time to talk about stereotypes. The st Has the Baje stereotype. not suffered enough for my people? <laughs> 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 They're like, you what? better, you you, we're going to be on the shelf above Dan and <laughs> you people are, you people are going to get it. Listen, next thing you're going wins. to say, is, <laughs> next thing you're going to say is that Nia Vardolos has murdered people. It's just rude at this point. <laughs> So, well, I have made no claims of anything, Angie. Oh, so this is all made up. Well, I have not made any claims. I have not done that whatsoever. I'm just sitting here in a turban. That's all. I have now. This is where Meredith, like, it seems just completely clear that she's guilty, right? Because Meredith normally would be. <laughs> oh. Dare you think that I would like normally it would be like head bobbing, yes. shaking, going into hysterics, getting up and walking away. And if you want to talk right. to me like that, like that's normally what we would get. But Meredith is really like 
the cat that swallowed a well, canary? Being, is that what you say? She's like, mm, mm, I never well, she's being very anything. careful with her words. She has to be very calm so that way she can be careful with her words because she. This is where her lawyer side comes out, and and she's like, I have never had a conversation where I have said anything of that nature about you. So like if she can't get she can't get into a tizzy because she has to make sure, oh, I never said that. I said I never had this conversation about you. Did I have this conversation about Sean? Perhaps, but not about you. Okay. So Mo Monica's mouth is agape. And she's like, Are you kidding? That is bold faced bullshit right here. We did have that conversation about her being in the Greek mafia. And she goes, Um, I didn't. I did not. Um, now the way that they just going back to when Monica first brought this up last week, she said she was walking through like Old Town. Where was it? Park City, like downtown Park, Park City. City. They were Park like, City and they were <laughs> and they saying were just how this used to be about, run by the Greek Mafia. Yeah. And her joking that and it's probably like Angie's family or something. I don't I don't know how this is. I been. got this. <laughs> yes. I got the impression that that was the nature of the conversation was like, oh, this is all run by by old, old, uh, the Greek mafia. And then they were like talking like, oh, maybe it was run by Angie's family. Like it sounded just like a speculative, like, wouldn't that be funny? Or do you think it is? Or maybe it was jokey. But it did not sound like Meredith was saying, I heard that she's in the Greek mafia and this is what happened. <laughs> and it feels it feels funky even standing up for Meredith cuz to me Meredith just looks completely guilty here. <laughs> even though yeah. in my even though I'm feeling like mm, no this is Monica fucking bullshitting as usual, right? So I don't know. So Monica's like let's just own it. You know well, you know what else we heard thanks to some DM sent to me on Instagram? And Angie's like, I heard. I've heard. <laughs> like, you don't need to go into it all. She's like, you owe 170000 of the IRS. And she goes, I do not do. Who is saying that? Her. Who is saying that? Who? Why uh, say it? And then Angie's like, Monica, you Monica said that after you called her and told her to look in her DMs, suddenly, after your conversation, some documents appeared from a fake account. Opa! Man, you called me one night and you said, did you get a DM from so-and-so's account? And I got one and I go and I look and lo and behold, there it is. Plus also a message from my mother being a bitch to me, but that's a, it's a separate story. I don't know who this person is, but I know who everyone thinks it is. You guys, right now, I'm like an organic diet cook. Suspicious. I'm very suspicious. Mary's like, well, it wasn't me. And when he says, uh huh, because last year there were DMs going around about Lisa. Okay, you're the girl who tried to pass off Jizz for Jazz, Whitney. Okay? Like, yeah. I feel like Whitney doesn't get a vote right now. And Whitney's like, yeah, and you're the one who brought it up with Meredith. And Lisa goes, oh my God, this feels exactly the same. And Whitney's like, yeah, it's pretty obvious you're doing this, Meredith, behind the scenes. And she goes, oh my God, I'm not doing it. I'm living my life. I'm so guilty. She's so guilty. I'm so torn on this. Yeah, so Meredith is like, at this point, with this group of women, the accusations aren't even surprising. I don't know what the issue is here. I don't know if it's jealousy. I don't know if it's hatred. I don't really know. But they have been incessantly coming after me for nothing. I'm just, you know, I'm a mom at home raising a toddler, and that's all there is to it. So wait a minute, you've never heard of her claiming bankruptcy or her husband being the biggest bun for a hot dog assembly? line or taking orders to give people cement baths by Hank Azaria? She's like, oh my god, you know what? You need to Google me, bitch, because I do fucking millions of dollars in business. Millions! I, I will give you my social security number, my birthday, my mother's maiden name. Google me! <laughs> fucking Monica's <laughs> over there like, do it. <laughs> do it. I've got my nose app open. Do it. I know. So Lisa's like, Meredith, you're lying about this. You're sending her fucking DMs about Angie. And she's like, I have never, I, I don't even understand what a DM is. Is that like Dominican Republic? I don't understand. 
And Lisa's like, <laughs> she's like, Meredith, you're done. We are done. I am sick of this. I am so done with you doing all this. Stop it. Like, you did it to Mary. You did it to Jen. You said before Jen even got arrested, she's going to have a Rico case, a racketeering case. Say it now, because I don't want DMs sent to Monica, Angie, Heather, and Whitney. Okay? You did it all. And I'm just like, okay. But here we so, go again. Okay. So now they're accusing Meredith of doing the Jen Shaw stuff. This all, because yeah, remember the they informant. were accusing Meredith of that, like Meredith called the FBI on, on Jen Shaw, as if that's how that works or whatever. So they bring, they're bringing this one back around and now putting it all together, you know, it's like, well, did Meredith, <laughs> what is, Good what is her. going on here? Well, so I'm um, like so mad like, that Meredith may have contributed to outing Jen Shaw as a criminal. Like, how could you do that to Jen? <laughs> yeah. like, what a terrible service Meredith did to all those old people. Right. So then she's like, what's going to come out next? Just tell me, because I would rather know than find out in DM sent to Monica and Heather and Whitney. And Monica's like, well, that's how I feel. That's how I feel, too. Um, even though Monica's the one bringing all this stuff out. She just cracks me up. <laughs> Boom. And Lisa's like, Meredith, I don't give a fuck, Meredith. You know what? I'm over this. Stop doing it, Meredith. Stop it. We all know it's you. There's nothing to be over. I can do anything. I'm just here. And Lisa's like, okay, you know what? You want to dig up stuff on people? We'll all start doing it and I will go. I will fucking go to the end. I Listen, I'm not doing, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. Look, I'm even pulling out my British accent to prove how not guilty I actually am uh -huh. right now. So they're like putting their faces in a napkin. It's big. It's been a big week for putting your face in a napkin on Bravo. Vanita put her face behind a napkin on Southern Charm. Mm. Ashley put her face behind a paper plate on. Oh, good, good <laughs> memory on all these. They're putting all of these yeah. together. So it's just like, wow, it's a big week for hiding behind plates and napkins. It's so a great week for the good people at Vanity Fair, and of course, by Vanity Fair, I mean the people who make the the paper plates and stuff, not the magazine. Just a vanity fair. They're like, we've it's got the name a of that story. People are hiding their plate, their faces behind us. I'm like, oh, it's not vanity fair. <laughs> it's the plates. <laughs> Isn't that the name of that? Isn't that the name of the plate? The plate brand, Vanity Fair. Because I always laugh every time I get them. You know, I don't know. I don't really follow plates. Plate it's called brands. Vanity Fair. <laughs> I'm not gonna look this one up. Unlike stalactites. So like it golden up. amber. Um, so you know what? Why is Chris Angel up on my screen? Is he Greek? Because I put famous Greek celebrities. So yeah, I guess Chris Angel is uh, Greek. Who it's knew? Like Chris... Well, he's no Yanni. That's for sure. And then Betty White, it says 10 celebrities you'd never guess are Greek. And then it has Betty White's picture. I'm not clicking that clickbait. You better move it, Betty. You're not getting me this time, Betty. Fucking A. Fucking <laughs> Betty White trying to clickbait me again. Okay, so then um, Lisa's like, you know what? If you start digging stuff up on people, I you want to do that? You want to start digging stuff up? Because I will go to the fucking end. I will do it till the fucking end with you. I am lavad. Okay, well, that right. sounds kind of like a threat that you're no stranger to digging things up either and so meredith right. is like i'm not doing anything and like a little kid voice she is so guilty and then my favorite <laughs> sound effect so lisa's like you know what crossman crossman can i get some bread that's his name right the waiter is it crossman crossman i need some bread bring it to me hurry i need bread i need bread i need bread i eat so much i've talked about food a lot today right guys did everybody get that hey meredith could you send everyone a dm talking about how much i eat that'd be great put your powers to and the use and then they show the waiter and his name this says crossman it's like crossed out because like it's not his name at all <laughs> she's like crossman crossman can you come here it's like uh my name's not crossman but um so then lisa's like you know what M Meredith, I feel like you look at Monica the way you used to look at Whitney and sent and sent them to Monica and said Monica is a vehicle to getting it out there. I mean, do you guys think this is what I do when I sit around all day long? Are you not aware of how long it takes to open up a little tin of caviar and podcast with Seth? I mean, come on. I have a very busy life and business. 
<laughs> Wendy was like, yes, cause you, cause I did it, I did it all for you last year. So yeah, I know. Oh, you did not. You hated, you hated Lisa too last year, and you guys were trying to bring her down over anything you could find, which was yes, some of the SEC. But stop acting like you're so fucking innocent in all of this. You all do it. All of you do it. I don't. I don't get how Meredith doesn't realize that we're, like, onto you. It, like, doesn't take Inspector Gadget to figure out what you're doing. She doesn't have superpowers. She can't make this go away. There's no invisibility cloak. You're guilty. Okay, a lot of things happening here. She's invoking Inspector Gadget and an invisibility cloak. Isn't that Harry go, Potter? Go, and us? Gadget. <laughs> her also, her shoes will pop open and spring her up. She, like, <laughs> flies into the clouds. Go, Brooksy, go. Um, I also like that that's the best inspector that Lisa could um, invoke in her confessional. Like, I think normally you say, you don't need Inspector Clouseau. You don't need, you know, Jack Reacher. Or like, you go for like <laughs> Poirot. There's no Poirot. Clouseau. Poirot. The last one, too. I don't know who Clouseau is. Oh, there's Clouseau and Poirot? Yeah. Clouseau and oh, Poirot. Oh, God. I'm doing all right. Got or is Clouseau okay. a famous author? I think he's an inspector. Hold on. Inspector. There is Inspector Clouseau. Yeah, that's what I thought. You had me doubting myself. It's a 1968 film. <laughs> he's from the Pink Panther, though. <laughs> Still. <laughs> but Poirot is what I really meant. The point is, you're supposed to give like a very good detective, not Inspector Gadget. Well, Inspector Gadget to Harry Potter. I mean, this is Lisa Barlow we're talking about, okay? <laughs> So um that's her high water mark for 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 detectives. It's pretty yeah. much it. <laughs> so then um Lisa's like, you know what? I don't get how Meredith doesn't realize like we're on to y'all. Like, I mean, come on. I mean, I only deal in truth, Meredith. Like, if we're gonna be right history, I can't be part of that. I'm sorry. I can't be part of that. Like, I can't. Like, if if one more DM shows up, Meredith, I will have my cybersecurity team and go the distance on you know, her cybersecurity team is Jack with those stupid bleach bangs. We all know it. <laughs> I think it's Mayor McCheese in the early bird. She, I mean, like... <laughs> all of our mothers sure. look at us like cybersecurity teams. We're like, Mom, yeah. how do you know where this came from? Mom, this is called the from line. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I have a cybersecurity team that helps me when my Apple TV always breaks. Apple TV. It's like, those are your children. <laughs> That's but, children exist to help parents with Apple TVs. Okay. It's not yes, cyber I am TV. totally the cybersecurity guy at uh, my mom's house, 100%. Or my mom, I just like when moms phrase things like that. Like my mom, I think I've told you this, but my mom's newest thing, I think she's heard that when you're really mad at a business, you take it to the internet, like you go complain, and that's how you really get power. Like you say something on Twitter or something like that. So she's like, get me a tweet, get me a Twitter. And I'm like, why? I don't want you to have a Twitter. Please no. And then she's like, yeah, because guess what? People fuck with me, I'm taking it online. I'm taking it online. <laughs> so the now when she's in a restaurant it. and she they forget her food, she goes, I'm taking this online. You watch. You watch. I'm gonna get you online. It's like, ooh, Rhonda's got a twit Rhonda's got a Twitter. Watch out, everybody. Yeah. I also believe that children not only exist to help parents with Apple TV, they also exist to describe the difference repeatedly between email and DMs, or at one point in life, email and instant messages, or email and texts. That is an ongoing thing. My parents have actually, they, they figured out that they know text messaging and they know the difference between texting and emailing. But there was a very long time where the distinction was not necessarily clear. Yeah. <laughs> All parents. So um, Whitney's like, wait a minute. Why the hell does Lisa have a cybersecurity guy? Do I need one of those? And Heather's like, I mean, she has six lawyers. I can only assume this is like Geek Squad and Armani. <laughs> yeah. John and I, we, we cross our T's and dot our I's. You do not expect us. Do you not expect us to have someone who works in cybersecurity? Bitch, you've been warned. Well, I love all this sneaky... Say it again. <laughs> I'm sure Russia is trembling. <laughs> I just <laughs> love like all the, to... It's like, who would be this sneaky to send DMs besides Meredith? By the way, I have cybersecurity people because that's how John and I are. 
and six lawyers. Like, <laughs> so far, you're the most offended and you are the fishiest out of all of these people with all of your fucking people that you pay for all of these clandestine operations that you've got going on. Can we just like take this back at the house? I'm sick of arguing in a in a cave. I want to argue in a house. So Whitney's like, I think we just need to end it. Okay. This is a whole thing. It has to end. It's like, uh, Whitney, why are you trying to cut into that book with a fork and knife? And so Lisa's like, she's like, We're friends and we shouldn't be hurting each other in any capacity. So they get up to leave and Heather tells us, like, listen, Heather has a very sophisticated way of pot stirring. Like, she's very into documents. I mean, what can I tell you? So she's like, okay, but to think one of our friends has gone to the extent of creating a fake account to send fake DMs to another one of our friends to, about the... I mean, that's just like, it's a huge boondoggle. <laughs> A boondoggle no, it's of not. deceit. Of deceit. <laughs> oh, I wrote receipt. I was like, what's a boondoggle of receipts? Like, hey, I want to return <laughs> this boondoggle. Damn it. <laughs> I've got this uh, receipt that seems to be encased in amberette. Um, it's a huge boondoggle of deceit. And this would be very, this is very weird behavior. Um, yeah, it's standard housewives. Digging up shit. It's standard housewives. I mean, I think they all do this. And this isn't really to excuse Meredith. I do think that Meredith is guilty on some level. I think she's guilty of like gossiping with Monica about it and being like, oh, really? Angie wants to fuck with us? Well, here's what we know about Angie. She's got these bankruptcies and all this. The thing with Monica is that Monica's just a wild card and she will sit there and talk about all this shit with you, but then turn it against you just for fun. She's like an agent of chaos, Monica. Like, Monica really doesn't well, care. Is she really friends with anybody? She hasn't made any real friendships. And I yeah. get that it's your first year, so why? I get that that would be hard. But she doesn't even seem to really have a plan except to just walk around dropping bombs. And I kind of yeah. love it. Monica is wonderful on this show. She <laughs> is a disaster. She is wonderful. I think Meredith definitely sent the DMs. I don't think that she was accusing Angie seriously of being in the mafia and um i uh i don't yeah it's weird i don't know why i i do feel the need to defend meredith i think it's because the greek thing the, the greek mafia thing feels like a false accusation so i'm like now you just stop that but definitely meredith set up those dms like a hundred percent well um, but the greek mafia stuff up, wasn't even in the dms that was just like no, it was just from a conversation walking stuff. through town so i do believe the financial stuff that she'd be like oh yeah and here's the documents but i also believe that monica would know how to do that because monica has like 21 cases against her most of them as we've talked about on this show are from non-payment and if you haven't listened to bravo talk it obviously go listen to the to their they kind of break down what all these cases are but monica you know monica's fishy so i think monica would 100 percent know how to go look up dot any of these people no one's in the i could do it like we're not idiots anybody yeah. could go on and look up public records and documents on people and so i don't think that that's really crazy but i think that mixing it with oh she said you were a greek mafia and also bankruptcy bankruptcy ban you get her so mad at the mafia part that that's the only thing anyone's concentrating on when the grain of truth is like some some bankruptcies and you're late on your taxes i mean if you've got yeah. businesses worth millions of dollars 170 grand really isn't that much it's like a missed uh estimated payment you know if you've got a multi-million dollar business taxes ain't cheap yeah well i'm sure more revelations are going to come out it seems like next week meredith gets she loses her mind again and she starts um Starts yelling again. She, this was this was a calm week for Meredith. Next week she's gonna be yelling again. So we're gonna see what happens to activate her. But thanks everyone for being here for this big episode, this big recap. Uh, we will catch you on the next one. We got a lot of shows, a lot of stuff to recap. So just you know, just buckle in, and we'll catch you on the next episode of Crappins. Bye everyone. Hi. Watch what Crappins would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. 
Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickolus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no less namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches, Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie, my favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Chadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Shannon, out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch, it's Victoria Cotchett. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watcher Crafts ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com/survey.